So I'm going to present two works that were conducted during my thesis at Rindia Ren and that, aim, and that were supervised by Anatole Lécuyer, Ferran Argelaguet, and Ludovic Oyer, and that aimed at contributing to the study of factors influencing the sense of embodiment towards avatars in virtual reality. Virtual reality allows users to be fully immersed in a virtual environment and also to be embodied in a virtual body commonly called avatar. Having efficient VR experiences using avatar is highly important for areas like training, medicine, or entertainment and social media. In such context, we want to have the illusion that our avatar is our real body. But what makes this illusion work? Which factors in fact contribute to the acceptance of a virtual body as one's own? In this thesis, we try to answer these questions in the core of work that I will present to you today. But first, I will start with some context. Virtual reality can be experienced through wide types of displays, such as projection one with caves, but it is also possible with head mountain displays, which use has been highly spread in the last years. A particularity of such system is that they lead to a full visual obstruction of users' real body. Which is why avatars started to be more and more used in order to represent users in virtual environments. In such contexts, avatars can be defined as virtual objects used to represent participants in the virtual environment. And it can take different forms and be more or less realistic and anthropomorphic, as you can see in those examples. Their use can be represented by a perception action loop in which we can see that a user will embody an avatar through which he will interact with the virtual environment that may contain virtual objects and other users and from which he will receive feedback that will contribute to his perception of the virtual environment and the virtual body. Such implementation raises several challenges, such as technical limitations regarding the acquisition of avatars in terms of 3D model reconstructions and 3D rendering, but as well the control according to users' movement in terms of motion capture systems and complex algorithms. But there are as well perceptual challenges. Since in order to provide good experiences involving avatars, it is important to understand how people perceive this virtual body. And in this thesis, we were as well interested in this question. How do users perceive their avatar in virtual reality and what influence this perception? The experience of the virtual body is commonly characterized by the sense of embodiment, which was defined and divided by Kilten et al into three subcomponents. The sense of ownership, that would be one self-attribution of a virtual body. The sense of agency, that would be the feeling of having motor control over a body and the sense of safe location, that would be the feeling of being spatially inside a body. And several works therefore explored what could influence the perception of those three subcomponents. And different factors of influence emerge from this research, mainly in relation to the choices of design of the avatars or technical characteristics. For instance, the appearance of the avatar was shown to have a strong influence on the sense of ownership, while the way the avatar is controlled according to user's movement was shown to strongly influence the sense of agency. Yet, these studies, among many others, are only centered on the avatar. They mostly consider what might impact the perception of an avatar through its characteristics. But the avatar is part of a loop that involves more than the avatar itself. It as well involves the user and the virtual environment. Yet, Despite being an integral part of the avatar experience, the user and the virtual environment characteristics have rarely been considered in studies on the sense of embodiment. In this thesis, we therefore proposed a categorization of factors influencing the sense of embodiment that considered the virtual environment related factors and the user related factors, and on which we have mapped the three main axes of this research. A study of the literature was then performed, structured on those three main axes, and of which I will now present you the main points, starting with the virtual environment-related factors. 
Virtual environments can be characterized through a multitude of facets, such as their render style, their interactivity, or the amount of sensory feedback they provide. The characteristics of virtual environment are known to influence users' VR experience, and especially their sense of presence, which refers to their sense of being there in the virtual environment. Yet, the impact of the virtual environment on the sense of embodiment remains rarely explored, and in particular, we identified two aspects of the virtual environment that were likely to influence user sense of embodiment. The multi-user capability and the occurrences of virtual threats. So why being interested in the multi-user capability? There are now more and more VR shared experiences in which users tend to be represented by an avatar. Civil work studied how users perceive the fact of sharing an environment with another by studying their sense of presence, the thirst of being there, widely studied in single user experiences, but as well in multi-user experiences. And it was shown that the sense of presence in multi-user VR experiences was enhanced by interaction and collaboration and facilitated when seeing avatars in virtual environment. Yet, the sense of embodiment in this context remained unexplored, leaving this question open. Does sharing the virtual environment with others influence users' sense of embodiment? Another characteristic of virtual environment that is widely exploited is their capacity to make users go a wide range of emotions, which is used in studies exploring user emotions reaction, VR-based exposure therapy for phobias, and what interests us is their use for virtual threats is the use of virtual threats in embodiment studies. Its use actually go back to the original study exploring the sense of embodiment which is the rubber hand illusion, in which participants can experience an, artifici an artificial limb as they own. And in such context, it was shown that response to threat led to an assimilation of rubber hand as one's own body. Several works then used it in VR, showing that a reaction to a virtual threat led to a, a sense of embodiment toward the avatar. And it could be different kind of threats, so either a knife threatening the body or virtual uh, threat to avoid like a, a saw or even a virtual character slapping the uh, participant's avatar. So threats are actually widely used in embodiment studies as an objective measure of the sense of embodiment. Yet, the potential impact on the sense of embodiment had never been explored. Leaving this question open, does the introduction of virtual threats can influence the sense of embodiment? The second axis of this thesis was regarding avatar-related factors. So as I said, the most common factors studied in the literature were the one related to the avatars, and one of them is the appearance of avatars in virtual reality. Some work shown that, uh, showed that uh, the more realistic and anthropomorphic the avatar was, the higher the sense of ownership would be towards the avatar. But it was also shown that it was possible to experience a sense of ownership towards avatars that differs physically to the participant's uh, body. So for example, adult uh, participants could experience a sense of ownership towards childlike avatars. Another uh, factor widely studied is the control of the avatar. It was shown that uh, in this work, that a uh, good visual motor correlation of the avatar according to users' movement will lead to higher sense of agency, while discrepancies in the visual feedback would tend to decrease it. And now, regarding the point of view, which is as so widely studied regarding its impact on the self of, uh, self location. It was shown that a first-person point of view, as we can see in the upper picture, would tend to lead to a higher sense of safe location, while a third-person point of view would tend to lead to a lower sense of safe location. But it was also shown that a sense of safe location towards another third-person point of view was still possible if there were congruent visuotactile simulation. So in the end, it seemed like we have those three main connections between factors related to the avatar and the subcomponents of the, sense, of the sense of embodiment. But it is not that simple. The, upper, the uh, avatar appearance was also shown to influence the sense of agency, while the avatar control also influenced the sense of ownership, and as well the uh, user's point of view. So in the end, 
due to all possible interconnections between factors influencing the sense of embodiment and its subcomponents, it remains challenging to quantify their impact on the sense of embodiment as a whole. Then, the interrelations between the factors influencing the sense of embodiment remain uncertain. Our last axis of research was regarding user-related factors. In the past uh, years, several works found correlations between personality traits and the sense of presence, as well as the immersive tendency which was found to be related to the sense of presence. But what about embodiment? Some work found correlations between uh, a personality trait, empathy, that was uh, correlated with the sense of presence, with the sense of embodiment. And then, in uh, other works, uh, other personality traits were found to be correlated with the sense of embodiment. Yet, those works were only conducted in the physical world, in experience uh, similar to the rubber hand illusion that I presented earlier. Only one work had more recently presented the same type of correlation, but with the locus of control, another personality trait, with the sense of embodiment towards an avatar in VR. So in the end, it seemed that there were very few studies exploring the influence of personality traits on the sense of embodiment and that not in virtual reality. After highlighting several limitations in the current state of knowledge about factors influencing the sense of embodiment, we defined the main objective that was to contribute to the study of factors influencing the sense of embodiment. And more precisely, to fulfill this objective, we realized five contributions that I will present today, to you today. A first contribution that aimed at studying the influence of VR shared environments on the sense of embodiment. A second contribution in which we explore the influence of sharing an avatar on user sense of agency. And it was done in collaboration with Naomi Ogawa, a PhD student from the University of Tokyo. A third contribution in which we explore the influence of virtual threat occurrences on the sense of embodiment. A fourth contribution in which we study the relative preference between appearance, control, and point of view. And a fifth contribution in which we explore the influence, the impact, sorry, of personality traits and body awareness on the sense of embodiment. And that was done in collaboration with Diane Deves uh, from Inri Arin. I will only present in detail three of the five contributions uh, in order to, um, because I don't have a, uh, enough time otherwise, but I will still present the big lines of the two others, starting with this uh, first uh, contribution. So, as a reminder, this contribution was done because we noticed the sense of embodiment had uh, not been explored in the context of, the, of uh, VR shared environments. Which is why we ask ourselves this question. What is the influence of sharing a virtual environment on users' own sense of embodiment? And we conducted a user study with 20 participants to explore this question, in which participants could be immersed alone with another participant, or in front of a mirror to be sure that potential results would not be due to the only fact of seeing a virtual body moving in front of them, but actually to the presence of another participant. There were two levels of competitiveness regarding to the task, which was a classical work a mole game. And the sense of embodiment was assessed by objective measure uh, with threat reaction and subjective measure with questionnaire. And so, as I said, I won't uh, give much more detail, but I will give you the main results. We found similar levels of embodiment when sharing or not the virtual environment, which is good news for developers of multi-user VR applications. We also found a stronger user engagement where users shared the virtual environment, and even more with competition. And we found lower agency in presence of a mirror than when facing another user which is an interesting result because uh, usually the mirror, uh, according to previous work, was uh, found to increase the sense of ownership, which was not our case in this experiment, but it even lowered the sense of agency, uh, which uh, is interesting and uh, would uh, definitely suggest to explore more the, the subject. We decided to make them share the control of the upper body, and the control was then shared by averaging the position and orientation of both users' controllers, and the weight of control could vary between 0 and 100. And in such context, we ask ourselves this problematic. 
What is the influence of sharing the control of an avatar with another on users' one own sense of agency? This work was especially motivated by previous work who showed experience of illusory sense of agency. Indeed, it was shown that the feeling of control was possible towards another person's movement, but as well that the sense of agency was possible even with incongruent movement feedback. But those uh, works were not explored in the context of sharing a virtual body. Regarding the protocol of the experiment, we had three phases, a first and last exposure phase, and then in the middle, a main exposure phase. The first and last exposure phases were conducted in order to have the participants getting used to the virtual environments, the task, and sharing the body, and as well to assess some baseline regarding the ownership and sense of agency towards the avatar that we could compare in the last, uh, uh, with the uh, results in the last exposure. And we then had this main exposure phase uh, in which participants had to do three different tasks that all consisted in touching one sphere among four with a controller, but that differed in terms of uh, constraint of movement. So uh, we will see that in more detail. In the three tasks, participants had to choose a sphere among four to, uh, to touch. So um, if participants would not choose the same sphere, they could uh, actually have to adjust their movement regarding the shared avatar to touch uh, a sphere. In the target task, the sphere to touch was highlighted, so both users would see the same sphere that they had to touch with the controller. And in the trajectory task, it's the same as target task, but in addition, participants had to follow a specific path uh, with, the, um, with the controller giving more constraints in, uh, in the movement. Um, as well, after each trial, users will answer how much did they feel in control on a seven Likert scale. And um, here are the results. We found that participants were good at estimating that level of control, which we can see with a correlation between the weight of control they actually had and the feeling of control they experienced. But they were also over, over, overestimating, sorry, the sense of agency if there were prior knowledge of the task. So uh, meaning if they had in mind the same sphere to touch. Uh, so it's visible, for example, here for the target task, which is a task in which both participants aimed at the same intention or sphere to, uh, to touch, and in which they uh, overestimated this, uh, their feeling of control. So it's uh, interesting uh, results. We also observed the gestures, the speed profiles of um, the um, uh, hands of the virtual body. So why we were interested in that, uh, it's because it was the, the part of the avatar that was uh, shared uh, by uh, participants. Um, and so it's the movement of um, the hand of the avatar for the three tasks and for each uh, weight of control. And what is interesting, what we can see, for example, in target uh, task, is that independently of the level of control, the gestures are quite similar. And a bit at the end where we can see more variability, but overall, the gesture remain uh, mainly uh, the same, which is not the case, for example, in the free task in which we see much more variabilities uh, with the colors between, uh, between the level of control, uh, which might be due to the fact that if a user would uh, choose one a sphere to target and the other one another one, they would aim at different uh, directions. So to conclude this contribution, uh, we introduced the new concept of co-embodiment, and we found that virtual co-embodiment could still elicit a sense of agency over a shared virtual body, and that motor actions performed in such context resemble the ones performed with a non-shared virtual body, which paved the way for future application in the field of your based training in which we can imagine a trainer and a trainee in the same virtual body, and the trainer could uh, show uh, movement to perform to the trainee um, that would see it in a first person point of view in this, uh, his own avatar. Uh, but as well, there are um, applications possible in collaborative teleoperation and physical rehabilitation. So we now switch to the third uh, contribution. So, as a reminder, we were interested in um, the impact of virtual threat occurrences on the sense of embodiment because we noticed uh, virtual threats uh, are highly used as an objective measure on the sense of, of the sense of embodiment, but it had never been questioned. 
Yet, uh, several work show, for instance, that anxiety or fear can have influence uh, on the cognitive uh, uh, aspect or on the sense of presence in VR, for instance. Uh, but the potential uh, effect on threats on the sense of embodiment had never been explored, which is why we wondered if the occurrences of virtual threat could have an impact on user sense of embodiment. And to explore this question, we developed an experiment in which participants were immersed in a virtual factory and were asked to perform a task that consisted in placing an ingot on a plate and pressing a button to, ha a button, sorry, to have it smashed by a crusher. A threat was introduced several times during the experiment, as seen in this video, so it was a malfunction of the crusher. And more precisely, here was the protocol. So participants would uh, perform in the first block 12 times the task, and in the second block, they would perform it 11 times with a threat introduced at the end. And in the third block, there would be an alternance between threat and safe trials. Embodiment questionnaire were then uh, answered by participants at the end of each block. And we had a control group which did the exact same experiment, but with no threat ever introduced. Regarding the results now, we found that the introduction of a threat does not alter users' sense of embodiment which is a good thing for embodiment studies involving threats, although we must consider that it is for this context, task, and type of threat, and that further work would be needed to see if it could be generalized to other type of context. And we also found that if it does not alter the sense of embodiment, it might change their behavior performing a task after, after a threat. So to uh, see that a bit more in detail, we computed speed profiles of the participant's hand when putting the ingot on the plate and coming back, so that we can see the ascending face and then coming back here. Uh, so this is a control group, so that did not uh, experience threats, and we can see tri trial in which no threat was introduced. What is interesting now is to see that in the threat group, uh, in the exact same trial, so trial with no threat, there is a difference of speed, so a faster approaching motion in the last trial after um, uh, uh, several amounts of threat, showing a difference in, uh, in their behavior. And we also found that, interestingly, their reaction to threat tend to vary um, uh, among the repetitions. So uh, it is against uh, speed profiles of the hand of the participants, but this time in trials with threat. So it's basically the, what we can see here, the peak, it's the reaction to the threat when it's introduced. So obviously, we can see a main difference between the first threat introduction that we can see here and the other threats, so that we can see that for sure that between the first occurrence of the threat and the others, there is a difference. But we can uh, see a small tendency, although not significant, of um, the speed to change uh, according to the repetition, um, which is interesting and uh, maybe we would uh, suggest we explore a bit more the, the question with uh, more threat occurrences, for instance, to see if at some point it makes a, a difference. So to conclude this contribution, it was the first study exploring the actual impact of threat on the sense of embodiment. Um, we found that embodiment studies should expect potential changes in participant behavior while doing a task after a threat, but uh, that threat introduction and repetition do not seem to impact the subjective measure of the sense of embodiment. I will now switch to our fourth uh, contribution. So as a reminder, uh, we had uh, found in the related work that um, the appearance, control, and point of view were widely studied in the literature, yet their interrelation or related impact on the sense of embodiment remained unexplored. Which is why we ask ourselves this question. Is there a relative preference between factors of influence of the sense of embodiment? Um, so, i switch a bit quickly. It is something actually difficult to assess in terms of um, experimental design, uh, and which is why we inspired ourselves from a method used in color science, which is the subjective matching uh, method. A method used in color science in which individuals observe a color and then try to match it by additively mixing nuances of the three primary colors until they experience the same feeling of seeing the previous color. It's a method that had been applied to the sense of presence and as well recently to assess the plausibility of virtual body animation features and that we applied for the first time to the study of the sense of embodiment where users try to match a given sense of embodiment by combining levels of appearance 
control, and point of view. To do so, we then had to define several level of factors that could be combined. So, for example, for our parents, we had a different degree of, um, of realism and anthropomorphic, either a very basic and abstract avatar with sphere, to a more realistic and anthropomorphic uh, avatar that could be slightly personalized in terms of hair color or clothes colors. For the control, we could have either automatic animation that we could see, we'll see a bit more in the next slide with an example, to more precise control with inverse kinematics or even motion capture, which would give the higher the precision. And we had two level of point of view, a third person point of view that we can see here on the left and a first person point of view. Then in order to uh, do the main experiments, we needed each level to make a significant change for users in terms of embodiment. And we also needed to validate an order uh, within the levels for each factors in terms of improvement, which is why we conducted a baseline experiment in which factors could experience all levels for each factors and had to rate them on a virtual slider that we will see here on the back regarding their preference while doing a simple tax that involved uh, all their body. So we can see here that the participant will switch, uh, will uh, firstly uh, rate this appearance that he has uh, tried on the slider rather uh, high. And he will switch to another appearance, which was a more like a robot-like appearance. Uh, we are now on the control. So we, we will see an example of um, automatic control. So now it's not his real um, uh, leg movement that we see, it's uh, automatically generated. And uh, once you reach this uh, spot on the ground, an animation will be launched on the body of uh, virtual body of the participants uh, on which he had then no control. And that he will uh, rate uh, rather low on the slider in this case. We now have a quick example of the third point of view of the avatar. And I just wait until he switch to first person and then. So thanks to this experiment, so I won't uh, go into more, much detail regarding the analysis, but it allowed us to reduce the number of levels, keeping only the level per se significantly different. Um, and I will now describe the task of the main experiment uh, used uh, using this level. So we designed four tasks in the context of a fitness room. So we, they, had, they were a punching task involving the upper body of the participant, a soccer task that involved more the lower body, a walking task uh, that consisted in a navigation task in which participant had to avoid ob uh, obstacle on the ground, and a fitness task in which participant had to mimic the movement of a virtual character. And we had a mixed design, meaning that each participant did only two of uh, the tasks over four. And for each task, here was the protocol. So participants would first try the optimal configuration of avatar according to our baseline experiments. So it consisted in first person point of view, full body motion capture, and personalized realistic avatar. And uh, they were asked to remember the sense of embodiment towards the avatar in terms of how they felt they owned the body, that they controlled it and felt specially inside it, and that they would also try all the level. Afterward, they would perform. The, they would start, sorry, for once from each of the minimal configurations, so either all the level at zero or all the level except one at zero, and they would perform the task once. After that, they would be asked which uh, factor they would like to increase in order to reach the sense of embodiment they had experienced in the optimal configuration. And they would perform the task again and keep on going by improving levels of factor and testing the task again. So in the end, we would obtain for each trial, for each participant, a graph of choices. So I can go quickly uh, over the tree showing like uh, possible choices of participants um, until a certain uh, configuration. And participants were asked to tell the experimenter when they experienced a sense of embodiment equivalent as the one experienced in the optimal configuration, even if it happened before, and reported these configurations as accepted configuration. They would then afterwards continue uh, the improvement until the optimal configuration. Regarding the results, uh, with all those graphs of choices, we computed Markov chain of uh, choices probabilities I won't show all the graph for all the tasks, but I will only show the interesting parts, which are, for instance, the first choice 
choices made uh, by participants. So for all tasks, what we can see is that for all tasks, the control and the point of view were nearly always preferred in terms of improvement rather than the, the appearance, sorry. So it's interesting because uh, the avatar appearance has a big impact on ownership. Yet when users are asked to choose between appearance and other factors, they seem to prioritize the other factors, which is also visible in the preference score that we assessed uh, at the end, uh, subjective, uh, that we asked, um, assessed at the end of the experiments in which control and point of view are also rated significantly higher than the appearance. So as a reminder, we were also interested in the accepted configuration, configuration in which participants experience an equivalent sense of embodiment as in the optimal configuration. And what we found is that for some um, um, tasks, uh, there were some accepted configurations. So for example, this one, the one-to-one -one with very low appearance, but maximum level of control and maximum level of point of view. It was often accepted with an equivalent sense of embodiment for soccer, fitness, and walking. But what is even more interesting is that it's not the case for punching tasks. And we may wonder why, why in this context, um, this task, so why the appearance was not maybe enough in this task. Uh, it could be because the arm of participants were closer to the eyes uh, due to the type of tags and they would see more artifacts of uh, the virtual body, but uh, more works would be needed to conclude uh, on that. And Additional differences uh, were highlighted uh, the, between the tasks. So for instance, we computed the best path graph for each task, which combined the paths that uh, were more likely to be taken by participants in each task. And what we observed is that for the soccer task, in two steps, the control was uh, improved compared to the other task. It's again hard to uh, make conclusion on that, but a possibility is that it was the only task that had a possible success or failure due to the ball going into the goal or not, uh, which could explain why participants needed to have more control because it could potentially lead to more success of the task. But again, it is um, no, not possible to conclude uh, on that. And we also found that the point of view was really important for the working task, uh, in which, uh, uh, which can be due to the fact that participants had to avoid obstacles on the ground and uh, may have to have a better view on the, on the ground with the first person point of view. So to conclude this contribution, it was the first subjective matching experiment applied to the study of the sense of embodiment, which brought insights of which factors to prioritize to enhance the sense of embodiment in specific tasks. I will now go to the fifth contribution that was done because we noticed a few works had explored the relation between the sense of embodiment and personality traits, and only one had done it in VR, which is why we had this uh, problematic highlighted. Do personality traits and body awareness influence the sense of embodiment in VR? So uh, to explore this question, uh, we had a user study with uh, 123 participants, which uh, consisted in a simple, in which participants did a simple visual motor task that we can see uh, in the, this video. And the sense of embodiment was uh, assessed subjectively and objectively with a threat as well. And we uh, assessed through different personality traits of participants with, uh, with a questionnaire, so the big five traits, the locus of control, and the body awareness. And so uh, as I had previously said, I won't go into uh, much detail in this contribution, but just give the main results. We found that big five Traits and body awareness do not influence the sense of embodiment, but that the locus of control is the main factor of influence of the sense of embodiment. So I will now briefly uh, go into more detail of the locus of control, which is a personality trait with two dimensions. People with internal locus of control tend to feel um, that uh, they have a high control on happening events in their life, while people with external uh, locus of control tend to think that things happening to them depend mostly on the influence of chance or other people. Other people. And we found in this study that people with internal locus of control experience a higher sense of agency towards the virtual body, but that people with external locus of control tend to experience higher sense of ownership. So this is already interesting to see that different um, components of the locus of control are, are correlated with uh, the two different uh, subcomponents on the sense of ownership. 
But what is also interesting is that we had explored this sense of agency, uh, this relation between uh, the locus of control and the sense of agency in this second contribution uh, I had presented today. And we had found a correlation as well, but the opposite one has in this study, but also the one from Jeune et Al, showing that definitely the, the, loc the link between the locus of control and the sense of embodiment should be uh, more explored in future works. So as a general conclusion, um, our main objective was to contribute to the study of factors influencing the sense of embodiment in VR. To uh, answer this objective, we have done a first contribution that aimed at studying the influence of VR shared experiences on the sense of embodiment, and in which we found that user sense of embodiment remained quite high in VR shared experiences, and the engagement toward the task is higher when they are not alone. We did a second contribution that aimed at exploring the influence of sharing an avatar on user's sense of agency, and in which we found that users are actually good at estimating their level of control and even seem to overestimate it in some cases. And the locus of control seemed to be correlated with the sense of agency. In a third contribution, we explored the influence of virtual threat occurrences on the sense of embodiment, and we found that virtual threats towards avatars do not seem to impact user's sense of embodiment, but might affect user's behavior while performing a task. In the first contribution, we studied the relative preference between appearance, control, and point of view, and showed that control and point of view were preferred by participants when trying to increase their sense of embodiment, and that a satisfying sense of embodiment was possible in non-optimal configuration. And finally, in the fifth contribution, we explored the impact of personality traits and body awareness on the sense of embodiment and found that the locus of control is the main influencing factors of the sense of embodiment, but that big five personality traits and body awareness do not influence the sense of embodiment. So if we extract some more guidelines uh, for uh, industrial uh, academic developers with uh, these studies. So regarding the development of multi-user applications, we can say the sense of embodiment is not impacted by multi-user applications and that co-embodiment unfolds a new range of applications in VR-based training and motor rehabilitation. Regarding the development of embodiment studies involving threats, it seems that in VR applications involving threats, the sense of embodiment should not be impacted, but that the user's behavior might. Regarding the design of avatar features, we found that there were some factors to prioritize when designing avatars in VR applications in order to enhance the sense of embodiment in specific tasks. And in the consideration of individual differences, we found that the sense of embodiment was mainly influenced by locus of control and not the big five traits of body awareness. Those works also highlighted several perspectives and future works. So in terms of short-term perspective, in the first and second contributions, uh, both the participants were colocalized in the same physical and virtual environment. But some works show that the fact of being colocalized or not in the virtual and physical environment could influence either social interaction or other area of other interactions. So it would be interesting to replicate those experience uh, comparing colocalized or not and see if it had an impact on the sense of embodiment in, a, in our case. Um, as well in the three uh, studies, we observed interesting uh, results regarding uh, mirrors in embodiment uh, and uh, its relation with embodiment. Um, so we, we believe either participants to um, uh, if uh, should look at their own body directly or uh, towards their reflection in the mirror and should be uh, more explored and remained a bit um, uh, ununderstood at the moment. Um, in two contributions, we observed the influence of users' individual differences on the sense of embodiment, and we believe it would be interesting to explore more threats or more individual uh, differences, such as uh, uh, the gender, for instance, or experiences in video games, uh, so things like that, and as well in different contexts and more type of tasks. And finally, it would be interesting to expand the design of the subjective matching experiment, uh, exploring, for example, more levels or more factors, and as well to explore more the implication of the tasks, the sense of embodiment. 
Regarding long-term perspectives, uh, up to this day, we are very far from avatars as imagined in James Cameron's movie, um, in which uh, users can embody an avatar and control it without even moving their own body and feel all that the avatar is feeling through their own body. But we can imagine uh, some path of improvement for the current avatar. So if we go back to the, our original loop, regarding the way we interact and control our avatar in the virtual environment, we believe there are some ways in which we could improve the control of avatars, looking, for instance, in other communities. Uh, for instance, the animation uh, community is used to animate uh, virtual characters, but uh, not always in real time, using, for example, machine learning-based animation, uh, which is also applied itself to robust facial animations. But, for example, this last uh, facial animations usually use uh, captors, uh, sensors that are placed on the face uh, of uh, users, which is hardly compatible with uh, head-mounted displays, uh, which is why it would be really interesting to further explore if those methods could be adapted to the um, animation uh, live uh, and control of avatars in virtual reality. Another community that uh, could be interesting to explore is the brain-computer interface community, which uh, explored motion, which uh, give the possibility, sorry, to motionless interaction, and that um, could possibly uh, be used uh, in order to control uh, avatars in uh, virtual reality. Another aspect that uh, could be further explored in uh, future work um, is to. Um, include more sensory feedback and explore more the influence on the sense of embodiment. So for instance, haptic and tactile feedback that were really um, not explored in this thesis and that could uh, really have an impact on the sense of embodiment. And we also believe it would be interesting to explore more methods of measures of user sense of embodiment. Um, the community of um, uh, the study of the sense of embodiment often questions the way of uh, measuring the sense of embodiment because um, if it's done by subjective questionnaires, it is sometimes uh, hard for the participant to understand the questions, but it is as well hard to uh, analyze afterwards, um, which is why so even recently there is a, a new validated questionnaire that was, uh, that was published showing how uh, important it is to have a a proper way to measure correctly, subjectively, the sense of embodiment. But there could be also more ways to uh, uh, have objective measures that could be explored to measure it. So several contributions um, were uh, done, so with the journals, inter national conferences, and national and inter international communications, thanks to this thesis. But the thesis contains as well its lots of failure, from which you can see a small extract. But uh, it's mostly very good moments, especially when you are supervised by the most amazing researcher that I wish to thank in the Latin square in order to avoid any other effects in my acknowledgement. <laughs> so thank you.